According to Reuters, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to retake control of the Gaza Strip's border with Egypt, expanding Israel's mission to neutralize Hamas in a conflict it says it expects to last for months. The war is at its height, Netanyahu told reporters on Saturday of the fighting since October 7 when the Palestinian militant group Hamas and its allies infiltrated Israel, killing 1,200 people and capturing 240 hostages. According to Reuters, Russian courts have sentenced more than 200 Ukrainian fighters to prison terms since Moscow started its military operation in Ukraine, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said in an interview with the state RIA news agency published on Sunday. The courts of the Russian Federation have already sentenced more than 200 representatives of Ukrainian armed formations to long terms of imprisonment for committing atrocities, Lavrov told RIA. According to Reuters, China's manufacturing activity contracted for the third consecutive month in December, an official factory survey showed on Sunday, as factories struggled with weak demand, clouding the outlook for the country's economic recovery. The official purchasing manager's index fell to 49.0 in December from 49.4 the previous month, below the 50 mark separating growth from contraction and weaker than a median forecast of 49.5 in a Reuters poll. According to Reuters, North Korea says one of its policy goals in 2024 is to launch three additional military reconnaissance satellites to advance North Korea's military and keep an eye on enemy forces, state media KCNA reported on Sunday. Based on the experience of successfully launching and operating the first reconnaissance satellite in 2023, the task of launching three additional reconnaissance satellites in 2024 was declared to vigorously promote the development of space science and technology, the report said. According to Reuters, in recent months, China has sought to stabilize the yuan by orchestrating buying by state banks and giving market guidance to bankers. The strategy of moral suasion marks a sharp break from Beijing's approach the last time the currency was on the ropes, in 2015. According to Reuters, Russia launched a fresh bombardment on Ukrainian regions in the hours leading into New Year's Eve, Ukrainian officials said, targeting Kyiv and inflicting damage on residential areas of the northeastern city of Kharkiv. Ukraine's air defense systems in the region surrounding Kyiv were engaged late on Saturday in repelling Russia's drone attack, the military administration of the region said on their Telegram messaging channel. According to Bloomberg, China's factory activity shrank for the third straight month, signaling persistent pressure on the economy from sluggish domestic and overseas demand. The official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index declined to 49 in December, from 49.4 in November, the National Bureau of Statistics said in a statement on Sunday. Economists had expected a reading of 49.6. According to Reuters, North Korea says policy goals for next year includes launching three additional military reconnaissance satellites and building unmanned aerial vehicles to advance North Korea's military, state media KCNA reported on Sunday. Based on the experience of successfully launching and operating the first reconnaissance satellite in 2023, the task of launching three additional reconnaissance satellites in 2024 was declared to vigorously promote the development of space science and technology, the report said at a major policy-setting year-end meeting presided by leader Kim Jong-un. According to Reuters, Juventus midfielder Adrian Rabiot's second-half goal earned a 1-0 home win against Azroma that took his side within two points of leaders Inter Milan in Serie A on Saturday. According to Reuters, the death toll from what Moscow said was an indiscriminate Ukrainian air attack on the city of Belgorod just north of Ukraine's border has risen to 22, a Russian official said on Sunday. Unfortunately, to our great grief, the number of those who have died in result of yesterday's strike at Belgorod has increased, said Vyacheslav Gladkov, the governor of the Belgorod region of which Belgorod city is the administrative center. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. labor market probably remained sturdy while wage gains continued to ease as 2023 drew to a close, setting up for steady economic growth and waning inflation in the coming year. Government data on Friday are projected to show payrolls in the world's largest economy increased by 170,000 in December. That would cap a year in which some 2.7 million jobs were added. According to Reuters, Democratic Republic of Congo's election commission is due on Sunday to release full provisional results from the December 20 presidential election, 
which the opposition has demanded be rerun over widespread irregularities they say have enabled fraud. Logistical setbacks, an election day overrun, and an opaque vote count have fueled a dispute that threatens to further destabilize a country roughly the size of Western Europe and the world's top producer of cobalt and other prized industrial commodities. According to Reuters, the death toll from a Ukrainian rocket attack on the Russian city of Belgorod just north of Ukraine rose to 24 on Sunday, the governor of the Belgorod region said. In a posting on Telegram, Vyacheslav Gladkov said there were also 108 wounded after Saturday's attack, which he said had damaged 37 apartment buildings among other locations. According to Reuters, U.S. Navy helicopters sank three of four small boats used by Iranian-backed Houthi militants to attack a Maersk container vessel in the southern Red Sea, the U.S. military said on Sunday. Helicopters from the USS Eisenhower and USS Gravely, responding to distress calls from the Maersk Hangzhou, returned fire on the Houthi boats in self-defense and sank three of the vessels with no survivors, U.S. Central Command said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Ukraine has exported 13 million tons of products through a shipping corridor in the Black Sea it established after Russia pulled out of a deal guaranteeing safe movement of vessels. Ports accepted 430 vessels for loading since the channel was created in August, Ukraine's infrastructure minister Alexander Kubrikov said in a post on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, on Saturday. According to Reuters, a group of opposition presidential candidates in the Democratic Republic of Congo asked supporters on Sunday to take to the streets to protest after provisional results of the disputed election are released. Congo's election commission is due on Sunday to release full provisional results from the December 20 presidential election. The opposition has alleged widespread irregularities, which they say have enabled fraud. According to Reuters, China's reunification with Taiwan is inevitable. President Xi Jinping said in his New Year's address on Sunday, striking a stronger tone than he did last year with less than two weeks to go before the Chinese-claimed island elects a new leader. The January 13 presidential and parliamentary elections are happening at a time of fraught relations between Beijing and Taipei. China has been ramping up military pressure to assert its sovereignty claims over democratically governed Taiwan. According to Reuters, President Xi Jinping said on Sunday that China will consolidate and enhance the positive trend of its economic recovery in 2024, and sustain long-term economic development with deeper reforms. In a televised speech to mark the new year, Xi said China would deepen reforms to shore up confidence in the economy. According to Bloomberg, Chinese President Xi Jinping vowed to strengthen economic momentum and deliver on job creation acknowledging some companies and citizens had a difficult 2023 in a rare admission of headwinds the country is facing. While touting China's achievements in his New Year's message, the leader noted, some enterprises had a tough time, and, some people had difficulty finding jobs and meeting basic needs, in the past year. According to Yahoo Finance, the political divisions in Washington are being felt down to the returns lawmakers generate from their controversial stock trading bets. Perhaps the best measure of this trading, which a slew of lawmakers and outside groups say should be banned entirely, are two regularly rebalanced exchange-traded funds that allow traders to mimic lawmaker holdings by party. According to Reuters, Russian President Vladimir Putin, facing an election in March, made only passing reference in his New Year address on Sunday to his war in Ukraine, hailing his soldiers as heroes but mostly emphasizing unity and shared determination. The pre-recorded address, being aired just before midnight in each of Russia's 11 time zones, was in sharp contrast to last year, when he stood behind grim-looking soldiers to make a stern call for sacrifice in what he cast as a fight for survival. According to Reuters, China's Li Auto Inc. said on Sunday it expects to launch and begin deliveries of its first fully electric car in March. Li Auto has already started taking pre-orders in China for its mega multi-purpose vehicle at an estimated price of under 600,000 yuan. According to Yahoo Finance, for driving enthusiasts, electrification is a dirty word. But when it comes to decarbonizing the Earth's atmosphere, the ability to harness clean energy, and simplifying the production process for automobiles, it's no surprise automakers and governments across the globe were eager to jumpstart the dream of an electric vehicle transformation. According to Reuters, 
as they turn from a year that could barely have brought more bitter hardship after 12 weeks of a pulverizing Israeli assault, people in Gaza have little hope that 2024 will bring much relief. In Rafah on Gaza's border with Egypt, which has become the biggest focal point for Palestinians fleeing other parts of the enclave, people on Sunday were more preoccupied with trying to find shelter, food and water than by the new year. According to Bloomberg, Colombia President Gustavo Petro said his government will keep diesel subsidies in place going into the new year while allowing local gasoline costs to fluctuate in line with international prices. There will be no harm to truckers and public transportation as long as we will maintain the subsidies, Petro said in a year-end speech late on Saturday. But we will promote a policy of transforming energy to cleaner sources. According to Bloomberg, Strains on U.S. consumer spending such as rising delinquency rates on credit cards largely indicate that Americans' debt is returning to pre-pandemic levels, the head of President Joe Biden's Council of Economic Advisers said. Jared Bernstein, a key advocate for Biden's economic agenda as the president seeks a second term in 2024, cited wealth gains, job market strength and rising real wages in 2023 as evidence that the U.S. is moving forward from an inflation surge that has depressed Biden's approval ratings. According to Reuters, Reckitt Benckiser Group's Mead Johnson Nutrition is voluntarily recalling select batches of Nutramegan powder from the U.S. market due to a possibility of contamination with Chronobacter shakazaki bacteria in products sampled outside the U.S., the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said on Sunday. Nutramegan powder, a specialty infant formula for the dietary management of cow's milk allergy in 12.6-ounce and 19.8-ounce cans, went through extensive testing by MJN and tested negative for the bacteria, the FDA said. According to Reuters, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron said on Sunday he had made clear in a call with Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahan that Iran shared responsibility for preventing Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. I made clear that Iran shares responsibility for preventing these attacks, given their long-standing support to the Houthis, he said in a post on social media site X adding that the attacks threaten innocent lives in the global economy. According to Yahoo Finance, for Wall Street, the housing market this year was hard to target and analysts often found their forecasts missing the mark. Take Wells Fargo economist Charlie Doherty, who in March expected home prices nationally to fall 4.5% this year. But by October, when mortgage rates were nearing 8%, Doherty ditched that outlook and projected home values to instead gain 1.8% in 2023. According to Reuters, the XFL and USFL will merge operations to form the United Football League with play set to kick off in late March, the league's partners announced on Sunday. In a joint statement, the partners said the UFL season will open on March 30 with a clash between the Arlington Renegades and Birmingham Stallions who are reigning champions of the XFL and USFL respectively. According to Reuters, police on Sunday detained three further suspects in an alleged Islamist plot to attack Germany's famed Cologne Cathedral on New Year's Eve, authorities said. The alleged attackers had planned to use a car to attack the 800-year-old Gothic edifice by the Rhine River, Cologne police director Frank Wisbaum told a news conference. According to Reuters, President Emmanuel Macron vowed on Sunday that 2024 will be the year of French pride and hope, marked by the Paris 2024 Olympic Summer Games and the reopening of Notre Dame Cathedral after a devastating fire. Only once in a century does one host Olympic and Paralympic Games, only once in a millennium does one rebuild a cathedral, Macron said. 2024, a year of determination, choices, recovery, pride. In fact, a year of hope. According to Reuters, artificial intelligence represents a mixed blessing for the legal field, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts said in a year-end report published on Sunday, urging, caution and humility, as the evolving technology transforms how judges and lawyers go about their work. Roberts struck an ambivalent tone in his 13-page report. He said AI had potential to increase access to justice for indigent litigants, revolutionize legal research and assist courts in resolving cases more quickly and cheaply while also pointing to privacy concerns and the current technology's inability to replicate human discretion. According to Reuters, Ukraine's shelling of the city of Donetsk in early New Year's Day hours killed three people, a Russian-installed official in the eastern region of Ukraine said, 
while Ukrainian officials said Russia launched another air attack at some of its regions. Seven people were also injured in heavy shelling by Ukrainian forces of the center of Donetsk, Denis Pushilin, the Russian appointed head of the broader Donetsk region of which the Donetsk city is the administrative center, wrote on the Telegram messaging app. According to Reuters, the bull run in Indian financial markets is likely to continue in 2024 as foreign interest remains robust, with heavy buying expected in both equity and debt markets, several analysts and industry watchers said. India's inclusion in the JP Morgan Emerging Market Debt Index will boost investments in government debt, while attractive valuations will keep funds flowing into the share market. According to Bloomberg, South Korean exports to the U.S. exceeded shipments to China for the first time in two decades last month, in a sign of shifting ties amid global tensions over economic security and tech supply chains. South Korea sold $11.3 billion in goods to the U.S. in December compared with $10.9 billion to China, the trade ministry said Monday. The switch in positions came as South Korea's overall exports rose 5.1 percent from a year earlier, a third monthly increase after a year-long slump. According to Reuters, the Indian rupee will open little changed on Monday, with the U.S. Federal Reserve interest rate outlook and the Reserve Bank of India's forex strategy expected to be the key to begin the new year. Non-deliverable forwards indicate the rupee will open nearly unchanged from 83.2075 on Friday. Other Asian markets were off. According to Reuters, China's President Xi Jinping exchanged congratulations with U.S. President Joe Biden on the 45th anniversary of diplomatic ties between the two countries, the official Xinhua news agency said on Monday. Xi also exchanged New Year's messages with North Korea leader Kim Jong-un, and both announced 2024 to be a friendship year for both countries, launching a series of activities for that, Xinhua said separately. According to Reuters, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky honored his people's resilience in times of bloodshed in a long and lyrical New Year speech, while Russian leader Vladimir Putin stressed his country's unity in a short and stern message that made only passing reference to the war. The speeches, traditional December 31 messages in both Russia and Ukraine, came as both countries marked the end of the year with increased air attacks on each other's territories. But neither side can point to any major frontline achievements in 2023.